Raising Niagara. Let's take a look at these historic events, tonight, on Project Algerine. It's 1813, and 27-year-old naval commander, Oliver Hazard Perry, is in the middle of what later becomes known as the Battle of Lake Erie. Perry's ship, named the Lawrence, has just sustained significant damage while fighting against the larger British warships. In a split-second decision, he transfers over to the Niagara with the remaining men, and continues to command the Niagara, into winning the Battle of Lake Erie against the British thus, making Oliver Hazard Perry a national war hero. Thankfully one year earlier, local resident Daniel Dobbins convinced the government to build a fleet of ships here in Erie, after being detained himself by a group of British soldiers during the fall of Detroit. Two locations were selected in which to construct the ships. One at the foot of Cascade Creek, which at the time had a large waterfall and an abundance of trees. The second location was at the foot of Peach Street. This area is known as the West Basin. This shipbuilding operation drew experienced tradesmen to the area, many of which remained in Erie after the war. Before going into battle, Oliver Perry trained alongside his men for several months. It's said that out of the nine ships constructed here in Erie, really only two were battle-worthy, the Lawrence and the Niagara. After the war was over, the Niagara was brought back to Erie and assigned to the Presque Isle station where it remained close to home. By 1820, the need for a warship in Erie became unnecessary, and the Niagara was brought into Misery Bay at Presque Isle and intentionally sunk. The Niagara would lay on the bottom for another 97 years. That is, until a celebration was planned in Perry's honor. But what would be remaining, if anything, of this once great ship? In 1912, a commission was formed for the planning of the Perry Centennial. A week-long celebration in Perry's honor, which would also restore the world-famous Niagara. So, it's back to Misery Bay. Divers were sent down and discovered the ship laying on its side. The ship's masts were the first items brought up. A small crane was brought in, and wood cribbing was erected to assist with the recovery efforts. The ship was discovered to be built of oak, cedar, and black walnut. Timbers cut from the shorelines of Erie almost a century ago. The ship had been found laying on its side, which made the damage much worse than anticipated. 
a local shipbuilder by the name of William Parsha, was hired for the reconstruction on the Niagara. Parsha and his men went over every inch of the ship, reusing whatever original pieces they could. The reconstruction progressed throughout the spring. Eventually, the form of a ship was coming into view. The reconstruction efforts were hampered at times because nobody could find the original plans for the ship. Parsha and his men had to make adjustments to the ship build frequently to account for this. On June 7, 1913, a small ceremony was performed on the shoreline of Misery Bay for the relaunching of Perry's Niagara. Niagara was outfitted with a new bowsprit, ropes, rigging, and reproduction cannons supplied from the Boston Naval Yard. Below deck, the ship contained storage for weapons and food, this also doubled as the sleeping quarters for the men. Without a crew to help the ship sail, Niagara had to be towed into position. News reports of the ship's reconstruction were increasing. The June 28, 1913 edition of Scientific American featured Niagara's amazing reconstruction. People began arriving in Erie to get an early look. The city spared no expense on the decorations, and on July 6, 1913, Erie kicked off the week-long celebration. The Perry Centennial drew crowds from all over the country. It was the largest citywide celebration that the city of Erie had ever experienced. Every building in the city was decorated for the events. There were parades, exhibits, music and dancing, and of course, the main draw was the Brig Niagara. As the events of the week-long celebration began to wind down, talk of Niagara's future was on everyone's mind. At the time, there were some who argued that the reconstructed Niagara should be scrapped. After the music died down, and the celebrations came to a close. Niagara began preparing for a journey. A journey in which this ship hasn't seen in over a century. Niagara would be towed by the Wolverine. The Wolverine was the Navy's first iron-hulled warship. The ships were tied together in Presque Isle Bay and Niagara was towed through the channel and out into Lake Erie for the first time in almost 100 years. The Niagara would visit a group of cities along the Great Lakes, such as Milwaukee, Chicago, Sandusky, Cleveland and Buffalo. Large crowds gathered wherever Niagara was on display. It seemed as though local dignitaries and politicians from each city all paid a visit to the historic ship. The motto, don't give up the ship, was never actually uttered by Perry. Nor does it have anything to do with the Battle of Lake Erie. They were the dying words of Captain James Lawrence, for whom Perry's ship, the ill-fated Lawrence, was named after. After the tour was over, the Niagara made its way back to Erie and was situated in the West Basin at the foot of State Street. This is where the Niagara stayed, tied up to the dock, for almost two decades. The ship operated as a tourist attraction along Erie's bayfront for many years before the Great Depression. The weather was beginning to take its toll on the ship, and because of financial issues, a plan to reconstruct the ship again in 1933 was put on hold. 
In November of 1943, after 10 years of raising money, a new hull of the ship was launched, and then towed into the West Basin, where it would wait for the construction of concrete piers. In 1945, Niagara was lifted onto its new concrete cradle at the foot of State Street. It took another 18 years for the masts and rigging to be installed in 1963. In the mid-1980s the ship was closed to tourists, due to severe deterioration. In 1988, the ship went through another complete reconstruction. Niagara was relaunched on July 18, 1990, and is now the primary exhibit at the Erie Maritime Museum, located in the East Basin. You've been watching Raising Niagara, on Project Algerine.